Hello everyone, and this mini lecture is on plagiarism and academic honesty. So North Shore defines plagiarism, uh, which includes but isn't limited to the use by paraphrase or direct quotation of the published or unpublished work of another person without full and clear acknowledgement. It also includes the unacknowledged use of materials prepared by another person or agency engaged in the selling of term papers or other academic material. This would also include material that is obtained from the computer. So I want to clarify what plagiarism is, um, why it's important to cite in your papers, and make sure you understand the degree, the expectations within this course around citation and academic honesty. For further information, um, by all means, you can consult the student handbook for more information. Um, the North Shore Community College Library has a great bare essentials, um, bare essentials citing guide. And I'd also recommend going to the online writing lab uh, website uh, by Purdue University. It's a great resource for understanding and properly learning how to cite and format papers. So one thing that students often get confused or don't realize is this term research. And students often get stuck saying, well, I, I was just looking stuff up. I didn't actually research the topic. And what the students don't understand is that research means gathering information about a topic, whether taken from a website, the course text, a documentary, or your local newspaper. If you go to, if you go to Wikipedia to read about a course reading, you need to cite it. Okay, that is, you're doing research. Anytime you look for more information and understanding about something, and that's something you're going to write about, you are performing research, and it's important to remember that and to keep track of those things. Because you can very easily slip up and get caught. Um, and then it's a conversation, then it's a very problematic conversation. So, Research at its most basic form is looking for new information to help you formulate your opinions and ideas. So keep in mind that when you go looking for further information, you are conducting research. In the end, also remember that in such cases, it's better to oversight than to undersight. You may lose a point or two because you have too many citations. Um, and in that, that point or two might be because you're double, citation, you're double citing when you don't need to or something like that. However, if you're missing citations and it's clear, that can really cost you because then, then it's a question of, is plagiarism at work here? And none of us want to have that conversation. So. Students often get annoyed with citations, uh, and, and they don't always fully understand why it is that we have to cite. So here's the best reasons to understand why citing is important. The first is to give credit to sources that have helped the student form their opinions and gather information, right? This is you acknowledging and giving respect to people that and sources that have helped you write your paper, right? Just like, you know, when the when the movie star gets up to receive the Academy Award, they thank people. They say, this couldn't be done without this person and that person and that person. This is what the student needs to do, is to, is to recognize and thank those people that have helped create that paper. It also helps your student, uh, it, it also helps your reader um, with a footpath of the material you've gathered. Right? It, it gives a sense to the reader where you've gotten your information, and that's important. Um, we live in a world in which, as much as we like to think about information as neutral, it really isn't. And so if you're writing about healthcare, as a reader, I'm going to want to know, did you get your information from the government? Did you get your information from Fox News? Did you get your information from the, the United Kingdom? Um, those are important pieces of information for me to understand and make sense of your writing. So it gives me a footpath as to what you have considered. As an instructor, that's important because I might have places to direct you to or sources to give you that you might not have thought of.
other readers, it's going to help them evaluate your writing and determine whether they want to believe or accept what you have to say. Maybe they want to go find other research to counteract what you've said. It also legitimizes your own arguments. As a student, well really as anyone, um, you need to establish your expertise or you need to establish that you know what you're talking about. In one way that you do that is by citing other people. Is by saying, I'm not the only one who thinks this is a good idea. Here are these other people that think this is a good idea. It's not just me, but here are these other th other people and sources that I've built my argument upon. So it's not just me, I'm not crazy, but here are the other people that, that agree. And so just to clarify around when we talk about citing um, and understanding the difference between quoting, paraphrasing, and citing. Quoting is a word-for-word -word copy of another person's work, of another author's works. Uh, these should be identified by the use of quotation marks at the beginning and the end of the exact quote. So to remember with that, you know, you're taking somebody else's words, you're just, you're identifying that they're somebody else's words by using quotation marks and making sure that, you know, you've dis you've distinguished them as such. And you want to make sure you get the words exactly. Lots of people misquote others, and um, that's not something you want to do because then that really, it, it creates a lot of problems about understanding and, and communication. For paraphrasing, <coughs> you're reconfiguring the words of another author, um, and you're putting that into your into your paper, and you're using a citation. So it's going to be a sentence without quotations, but you're re you're, you should have a citation indicating that that information, those ideas, came from another source. And then citation is the reference point within a paper that indicates some or part of the information prior to the citation was taken from another source. The citation itself will identify that source and typically the page number. Um, in this course, the preferred citation format uh, is MLA, MLA, but if you're more comfortable with APA, that's fine too. Just whatever you choose, be consistent. But the citation is the marker saying that where this material came from. And you should have a citation whether you are paraphrasing or whether you're quoting. And so that marker within the paper, that citation, is usually very brief. And the much more fuller citation should be in your work cited, which is a separate page at the end of your paper um, that has any of the material that you've cited or consulted in the writing of your paper. Um, but again, just remember that whether you're quoting or paraphrasing, a citation is needed, as is a work cited page. So that's one of the thing. One of the first things that I look at in a paper is: Are there any citations? Is there a work cited page? And depending on the assignment, it's going to raise some questions about right off the bat about whether you have performed this assignment to the expectation. So on quoting, a couple things to remember about quoting. Students will often use quotes, but they don't often use them effectively. Quotes in general should be short. You should have them as short as possible. They should be absolutely necessary. Don't quote unnecessary material. Students fall into this trap all the time. You really want to think about what is what do you is what you're quoting absolutely relevant or do you need to quote it? Um, have genu genuine relevance to the student's paper. Uh, students sometimes like to start off with a nice quote at the beginning of the paper, even though it doesn't really resonate with what the paper is about. I would also say stylistically unique. You don't want to have a quote that's just straight information or is lacking anything dynamic. Um, the quote should have a bit of pop to it. And students should, when, when possible and when relevant, trim their quotes through the use of ellipses. That is, if, there's, if you have three sentences and the middle sentence isn't really relevant, doesn't really help, you should trim out that sentence by using ellipses. That is, that dot, those three periods, or in, in the case of if it's a sentence, four periods. All right, when should you quote? To reinforce a larger point, especially if you're talking about a particular text and you're saying, you know, this text means this. You should be able to pull in a quote to reinforce that. Um, when the author of the quote 
quoted source has said something extremely profound. So when the author has said something where your mind is totally blown. Uh, when, when students might quote, um, when identifying an, author, an author's opinion, mainly to agree, contradict, or to challenge it. So if the author has offered up something, um, some viewpoint, some thought, and you want to use that to reinforce your argument, or you want to use that to say, oh, no, 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 this author is all wrong, this is when you might use a quote. But when should you not use a quote? Factual information, unless really nuanced, right? So if the author is just saying, well, the sun came up on Tuesday, and on Thursday it rained, and on Friday there was snow, that's factual. that might be factual information that you do not need to quote. So really look at what the information is and determine, or what the, the writing is and determine, is this, is this just information that I can pass along? Do I really need to quote this, or um, can I just paraphrase it, or do I need it in my paper? Uh, just make sure that it, in, you, when you don't want to quote, uh, when you should not quote, uh, is when the quoting adds absolutely nothing to your paper's argument or purpose. Right? Students sometimes just throw in quotes without thinking about, does this add to my paper? Well, it'll add to the, you know, it'll add to the paper's length, but that isn't going to matter um, if it doesn't really add to your paper's argument or purpose. So really look at the quote, analyze it, think strongly about whether it fits your needs or not. Um, and something to just remember, students should be paraphrasing much more than they should be quoting in their papers. Right, that you should be really taking, you know, the author's words, putting them into your own words, and putting that in the paper along with a citation much more than you should be putting quotes. Remember that all of these papers um, in this in this course operate off of a word count, and that word count doesn't include quotations, but it does include paraphrasing. That is, if you're paraphrasing a lot, that's okay, because that's your own words. You're putting things into your own words. All right, so just to remember, pl plagiarism, accidental or, or otherwise, is any time you take information, ideas, material from another source, you need to cite within your paper where that information is, and you need to, s to include the full citation information in your work cited. This applies to things taken word for word, which should be surrounded by quotations, and when you paraphrase. All right. One other thing um, to address in this course that, that students sometimes have trouble with is rather than actually doing the reading, students often go to sites like Cliff Notes or Spark Notes or Wikipedia um, to read that material instead of actually reading the text. Um, and I don't recommend students doing this for several reasons. The first is that students often go to these because the readings are hard to understand. Um, and what I would say is that's okay. The readings are going to be hard to understand. You should be struggling with them. I don't expect you to perfectly understand and make sense of the readings outright. That's what class is for. You read it. You struggle through it. Then we come to class, face-to-face -face or online, and we unpack that. We have discussions around it. We make more sense of it so that when you leave class, you can say, oh, now I understand a bit more about what Young Goodman Brown is all about or whatever it is that we've read. You do want to struggle with it, and it's okay if you don't understand it initially. That's what we have class for. More importantly, the discussions on various websites are going to influence how you think, discuss, and write about the work. And there certainly has been times when this has resulted in the students getting caught for plagiarism. Uh, a good example of this is a couple of years back, I had students watch a documentary in one of my courses, and they were to write a, doc a, a paper about the documentary. Now, what ended up happening is in several papers, the students referred to the person in the documentary as a as a um, geographer, even though the documentary referred to him as a biologist. And I found this very weird because I knew the documentary very well. There was no mention of hit of this person as a geographer. But sure enough, 
if you go if you go onto the Wiki, Wikipedia page about this person, he's listed as a geographer because after the documentary was made, he moved into a different department and became a geographer. So I had to sit down with several students and explain that they have actually plagiarized, and they plagiarized, and I caught them on one word, and it was significant in that. In this case, the students had clearly gone somewhere else. They went to Wikipedia, and Wikipedia influenced their writing enough for them to change biologist into geographer. And so that undermined their entire paper. That had me asking them, why, you know, why did you go to other sources, or what other sources did you go to that I don't know about in this paper? Is this your own paper? So it's very, very important that if you go to these other sites, you're aware that they're going to influence how you think, discuss, and write about the work. And that could have some, you know, that could backfire unless you're making sure that you cite them and that you clearly identify where the information came from. Um, but students won't have often do that because they won't, you know, they, they don't want to admit that they've even gone to these sites. Um, and then finally, you know, again, I don't, I, I don't encourage you to go to these sites because I, I think struggling with the work is the purpose of edu is part of the purpose of, of education. If you go and you seek the easy answer, then you're never actually going to learn that skill set of breaking down a text, of really using your own ability to analyze a text to make sense of it. So, you know, I know students are still going to do it, and I just want you to understand that that you're setting yourself up for potential plagiarism. And you're really underselling your own self. You're saying you're, you know, you can't struggle with a text, and you're not comfortable coming to class and saying I don't understand, even though that's okay in our class. I, I, I don't expect you to understand everything perfectly. That's what we do in class: is we discuss it and we make sense of it. Um, so again, you know, if you do end up going to these sites, I really recommend that you keep track of them, that you are aware or you pay a lot of attention to how this influences your writing within the course, because it could set you up unintentionally for plagiarism, and then that's a good discussion that none of us want to have. All right. So just the final note, you know, in this class, students must cite all material, including the course text, in their major assignments. For any material that the student uses that is not directly drawn from course material, the student must provide a work cited in full citation for the material. For the material, failure to do so is plagiarism. Anyone caught plagiarism will automatically fail the assignment and be reported. The instructor and I also reserve, as the instructor, I reserve the right to fail the student for the course. Um, if caught plagiarism. Let me emphasize, neither of these I like to do. It, it kills me to do these. But I do take plagiarism very seriously. And so if there is an instance in which plagiarism is occurring and it's, it's you know, clearly purposeful um, attempt to not do the work that's expected of you and pass off other people's work as your own, um, I do reserve the right to take it to this degree. But please, you know, let, let's hope we never have to have this conversation. And I should let you know that your papers are run through the, the plagiarism checker on turnitin.com where it takes your paper and it compares it to all other papers submitted to the website as well as um, weighs it up against the rest of the internet. So do know that I have this backup that you know can also clearly identify if you have plagiarized your paper. Alright, thank you very much for listening. See you in the next lecture.